start recording. Okay, please. So. Okay, yeah, thanks you so for the invitations. Yeah, and thanks everyone for coming to uh, have a, this next discussion on our re recent research on audio generation. Uh, so uh, a little bit introduction introduction of myself. So I'm Hao He Liu. So how to pronounce my name? So my name is two syllables, one Hao, and the second one is He. So the He is exactly the, the singer sound as hello. So it's pretty, it, it's straightforward to pronounce. Uh, and today I will briefly introduce our recent work on text audio generation. Uh, and the module name is called Audio LDN. Yeah, and in the first slides, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my uh, fellow collaborator, uh, collaborators uh, in, this, in, this, in this research. Um, yeah, so I, I come from the University of Surrey, uh, which is uh, located in a small town, Buford, in the UK. And uh, uh, I'm supervised by Professor Mark Tumby. And uh, another very important author for this work is uh, Zhou Hua Chen. Uh, so he's uh, currently a PhD student in the Imperial College, uh, supervised by Professor Danilo Mandik. And other, there are also other contributors to this project and this research, like uh, uh, Yuan Yi, uh, Xin Hao Mei, Xu Bo Liu, uh, Professor Danilo Mandik, Professor Wen Wang, and Professor Mark Ding Tumby. Yeah. Uh, so this talk will not contain too much like mathematical details. Uh, so uh, please relax and uh, just enjoy the talk. And uh, uh, before I start with the uh, uh, introductions, I would I'd like to first play a very short 90 seconds video to show a bit, uh, a bit of overview of this model. So let's get started. After that, just dry up and can after that, just dry up and can after that, just dry up and can everything here. So here we go. Yeah, then missing part in the middle. Everything here. So here we go. Or go with the two police steps, not the first. Uh, so basically what this video show is uh, four parts. Uh, the first part is about text audio generation. Uh, second part is uh, audio scale transfer and then followed by uh, audio super resolution and audio in painting. Uh, so uh, you might be uh, feeling a little bit confused about, uh, uh, about the content of this video, but don't worry, I will uh, break up, uh, I will uh, break the, this model into different uh, small pieces and uh, introduce it. Uh, so before we go into technical details, I'm, uh, I'd like to discuss some uh, background. Uh, uh, so firstly, I will briefly discuss what is audio generation, and then I will briefly discuss uh, why do we need audio generation. So for audio generations, uh, it's a pretty broad, broad and uh, vague concept. So uh, every actions I did, such as I clap my hand or I step my foot, or I just play a music with my pianos, that's all the creation of sound. Uh, all, all can be treated as, as audio generation. Yeah, but in academia, in order to make the problem simpler, to narrow down the topic, uh, so generally the sound will be categorized into like sound effect, speech, music, and uh, even other, other sound. And uh, as for the, if the history of sound creations, I will do an introduction of 
uh, re regarding the sound effect, speech, and music. So as for the sound effect, uh, a very important man is called Jack Foley. So uh, as we can see, uh, here is an occupation called Foley artist that's named after Jack Foley. So this kind of occupation is to try to mimic the sound using uh, a specialized device or some other technique. So, uh, so this kind of technique are widely, widely used in movies or in the game industry. So it's a, a very uh, important uh, occupation for the audio industry. And later, in order to generate sound effect, there are some work on physical modeling, such, such as NESS project from the University of Edinburgh. And, uh, mo uh, and also there in parallel with the development of network and storage systems, uh, the sound effect library also came into the stage. So the, some popular sound effect libraries such as the FreeSound or the BBC sound effect libraries. So it's uh, all quite widely used. And for speech creations, uh, earlier work mainly uh, try to try to simulate the uh, st structure of the human vocal tract, and the, uh, including the lips or the tones, uh, including the mechanical method or using the uh, electric electric device. And the, most recently, the deep learning method dominated this process, and uh, a lot of work has emerged that people currently uh, even even become hard to distinguish between the synthesis and the real recordings. And as for the music, uh, uh, it's very clear that music instrument is the most earlier form of the music creation. And later uh, with the development of synthesizers and the, the unifications of the MIDI file format and the, D and the DAWs, uh, the creating music become easier with the uh, computers. And in, the, in recent years, there are a major breakthrough in different based methods also, uh, such as uh, Jukebox or the MIDI DSP or Musenet. So uh, very impressive results achieved by deep learning models. Yeah, uh, if we compare the, these three slides briefly, uh, we can find some uh, interesting uh, trends and results. So for example, uh, the sound effect, uh, in, 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 for the sound effect creation, uh, we haven't mentioned the deep learning based method. Uh, that's because uh, sound effect is a more broader and maybe, uh, 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 yeah, it's a more broader topic. So uh, the, uh, the, the deep learning method haven't uh, dominated this, this, this field. But for music and, all, music and speech, the deep learning method is the opposite. So that's the first ob uh, observations. And the second one is, uh, we discuss these three kinds of audios in separate slides, but why do we do that? So can we do these three kinds of sounds in only one models? Can we do this, them in a unified ways? So that's the uh, main objective of this research. So we like to build a machine that can generate all kinds of audios uh, using the human instructions. And the human instructions, uh, the most natural way using the text and the natural language. So that is the task we will do in this research, which is text audio generation. And why do we need text audio generation? So that's apparent enough. Uh, we can use uh, this kind of technique to assist the Foley artist. Uh, that, that's a huge industry for the movies and for the gaming productions. And uh, some startups have already success on audio generation such as generating the endless music or gen generate the ambient noise for the audiobooks or white noise for meditations. Also for the academia, the audio generative models can be a very useful for audio, uh, for data augmentations, uh, such as there are some tasks on audios like the few shot audio event detection or few shot audio taggings. We can use the generative models to do the uh, data augmentations. Uh, uh, besides, uh, and in addition, the text audio generations can be a bridge to other modalities. Uh, so, for example, we do not have too much paired data between the, yeah, I wrote the laser pointer. Yeah, uh, we don't have too much paired data between the sketch and audio. So, for example, we like to build a sketch to audio generation. We can use, uh, we can use the text audio generation and the sketch to text generation uh, and to link the two different modalities. So that can create massive amount of possibilities. And one use case is shown in the right side. So uh, when people uh, on Hugging Face, they build a 
uh, application using our text to audio model. Uh, they use a we first use the image captioning model and then use our generative models. So that uh, generally that becomes an uh, image to audio generation. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, so maybe currently you will have a question mark in your mind. Uh, so why do we need a generative models since we already have a massive amount of uh, audio files in the Sandika libraries? So uh, in the, for these questions, there, these two graph showing the right hand side uh, have clearly illustrated. So if we use a retrieval way to get a sound we need, we need to find a way to index, uh, to effectively index the sound we need. So but this process needs a very liberal searching and uh, maybe manual labeling process. So it's not very uh, cost effective. Uh, but in the, uh, in the uh, uh, upper part, part of the image, uh, if we just tell the machine what we like and the machine will directly give you the sound, that is the most effective and most direct way we can get the material we like. And also with the audio generative models, our work can, uh, the, the work of the audio producers can become more creat uh, creative, can be more inspiring to the audio producers because the generative model is, uh, can do some interpolations in the latent space, like generating the sound, like a uh, half cat and half sheep sound, which is quite interesting. Okay, uh, so he, here we have finished the introduction of the background and the reason for us to do this topic. And in the later section, I will briefly introduce the, some related works. So we will dive into a bit of the technical side. So first of all, I will list, uh, at least here a few related works. So I categorize the audio generative uh, research into uh, these following sections. Uh, so like label to audio generations, uh, text audio generations, uh, text to music generations and others. So we can briefly compare the label to audio and text to audios, and then maybe text to music. Yeah. Uh, so it's clear that label to audio is uh, a bit restricted, co restricted com compared with the text to audio because label it is a finite set. So for example, ten different kind of songs, including full step or baby crying. But for text, it's an open set, uh, not open set. It's an infinite set. So they are you can use any natural language to describe, to describe your sound. So that's uh, infinite possibilities. And uh, if we compare text to audio to text to music, uh, it's, it's clear that the target is different. Uh, one is for music, uh, one maybe for general audios. Um, but note that previous work uh, still uh, treats the text to audio as generating sound effect or including a little bit of speech, but not too much emphasis on music. Uh, yeah, but I have to admit they do can generate music. And uh, other works such, such as the jukebox, uh, they can generate music using the condition of the uh, composers or the lyrics, such as I give the model, you make a rock music written, written by Lady Gaga with what, what, what lyrics, and then you can generate the sounds. And audio IM use a language model way to model the audio signal. We first use uh, VAE encoders to uh, to discretize the audio into latent representation into discrete latent representations, and using the master predictions similar to the language model to do the model self supervised training. And the singer song also a very interesting model uh, announced in this January. Uh, yeah. So uh, in, in the few in the next few slides, I will briefly uh, introduce the main architecture of the text audio generation models. So the first one is about the deep sound. So we can see on the top left corner, here is a uh, overview of the structure. Uh, we have a text input. So text input can, can be any description to the audios and the text input will go through a text encoders and the text encoders output will pass through a decoders to generate the index to the code books and then use the VAE uh, VQ VAE decoders to generate the, the MIOS graphogram and then vocoders to generate the waveform. So uh, a few things we can pay attention to in this in this graph. So the first one is uh, we have we need a uh, text input and we also need a MIOS graphogram. So that's the paired data. So we need them to do the model training. And second one, uh, second thing we can pay attention is about the VQ VAE. So this model is working on a latent space, not directly on the MIOS program or on the waveform. 
And later in the October, uh, a model come from the Facebook uh, origin. So this model also use a uh, AQVAE to learn a, a discrete internal representation. But the difference from the uh, diff, diff sound is the VQV here is working on the waveform. So they, they claim that in this way, the model can have better qualities. And another thing is they use a autoregressive, uh, they use a tran tran transformer decoder to learn a mapping from the test, test encoder output and the audio tokens. So uh, that's the uh, uh, big novelty of the origin models. And uh, this, this work is uh, uh, in the same period of my work. So it, it's in parallel of my work. So it's a uh, make an audio. As we can see, it also works on the listen space of an uh, of, uh, autoencoder. But the difference is that here's autoencoder use a continuous listen space. So that's the first, first thing. And the second thing is that uh, it also uses uh, text as input and uh, calculates a loss function uh, here as the, as the unit. Uh, so, uh, make audio also need the, the text and audio paired data. And uh, one of the no novelties in this paper is to introduce the, the pipeline shown in the second row. So, uh, in this pipeline, the author will use the uh, will, will do the data augmentations uh, doing using the audio captioning models and audio text retrieval models, and they can concatenate the sound and then uh, using some predefined policies and grammars to do the data augmentations. And we will briefly compare our augmentation method to this uh, in a later slide. Yeah, if we uh, see the big picture of this three work, we can find that three work will all work on the listening space of a VAE and all need uh, paired text and audio data. Um, but uh, this kind of uh, training scheme has some limitations. So as shown in this first bullet point, um, previous method takes the text as input and generates audios, then calculates loss function and do the back propagations. Uh, but in this way, we need text and audio pair data. It's very clear. Um, but the text and audio, audio pair data is very hard to collect uh, because audio itself is very hard to do the labeling uh, be because, uh, because of the ambiguities and you need to listen through all the audios is time consuming. So previous work generally have like uh, 800k data is not a very large scale training, training data. Um, but uh, we propose a method called self supervised learning for audio generations. So this method has this kind of overview. So the input will be audio, and the output will also be audio, audio itself, and then cal calculate the function and do the back propagations. So in this way, we can easily, easily scale up the data without collecting the audio text pair data. And the Few other bullet points here list uh, mentioned our model is uh, training uh, computationally uh, efficient. Uh, we can train the model using only one GPUs, and, and I will talk about why we only use one GPUs. And uh, we also improve the quality, so we are of the art generative models on audio. Uh, also, uh, we work on the continuous listening space, so we enable some cool uh, downstream tasks using the continuous listening space. So I will also go into the details in later slides. OK. So this slide shows a big picture of the self-supervised audio generation I, I mentioned in the last slide. Uh, so uh, for self-supervised audio generation, there are two general steps. Uh, the first one is the, in the first row, and then the second row. So in the first rows, we will have a small data set that have paired audio and text data. And in this case, the machine will learn the, the relationship between the audio and text. So I move the window a bit. Yeah, ah, OK. Uh, so in, in this uh, grid box, uh, we can consider it as, a, as the brain of the, of the machine. So after the step one training, the machine will understand that laughing sound and giggling sound will sound similar. And also laughing and giggling, it's also similar on the text level. But the laughing and guitar, these two are two different sound. So, in, so after the step one, the machine will have this concept. And in step two, the machine will utilize this kind of 
prior knowledge to gain more uh, capabilities on larger scale of audio data. So in step two, I will prepare a massive amount of audio to give to the model. And then the model can do the self-tutorialized audio generations. So they can use the prior knowledge to learn by itself. So that's the main idea of uh, our models. So, all right, let's dive a bit deeper into the model ar architectures. So generally speaking, our model have four different components. The first one is the contrastive language audio learning encoders. So uh, it's shown by this two blue box. So these two blue box are two, inc two encoders, one for audio and one for text. And the second one is the uh, listen diffusion models. It's a, a core part of our architecture, the, the green box here. And uh, the third one is a male spectrogram autoencoder. So you can consider it as a beta VAE. So we have a VAE encoder and a VAE decoders. And if you will learn a representation space from the male spectrogram. And the last, last component is a uh, vocoders. So the vocoders will convert the male spectrogram into the audio, uh, the, the audio waveform. Yeah, and, there's, and uh, these four different sections, we train it separately. So in this case, we do not need uh, joint end-to-end -end fine tunings or similar, uh, some similar stuff. So in this ways, we can do this with only a uh, small GPUs or uh, one, one GPUs. And uh, uh, there are two kinds of uh, arrows in this graph. So one is a solid line and one is dashed line. So the solid line shows the training process and the dashed line shows the sampling process, which is a generate, generation process. So, yeah, uh, I, yeah. One thing I forgot to mention is that the V encoders and V decoders are trained uh, in a pretty standard way. So we use a, a, a discriminative loss and reconstruction loss, and we also enforce a KR divergence loss on the listen space in order to make the to, in order to limit the variance of the listen space. And the coders are also pre-trained using the HiFi gun. And uh, in the next few slides, I will I will primarily introduce the one and the two part, the clap and listen diffusion part. So the clap part is correspondence to the step one we just mentioned um, in the overview in the previous few slides. So uh, we utilize the method proposed by Yu Song and uh, Chen Ke. And uh, they, uh, in their method, uh, it's pretty similar to the clip models. So we will have two series of data. One is a series of audio, and another one is a series of text. And the corresponding audio and text, they are paired data. So during trainings, the model will accept two series of data from two different modalities and uh, calculate the embeddings from the two different modalities. And we will train the models by calculating the distance between the two series of embeddings. And uh, since that's in the diagonal elements, the diagonal elements are paired data. So we, we like to, we want to have the maximum similarities between like the EA1 and ET1. So in this case, we will do the model optimizations using this uh, cosine similarity metri uh, metrics. So that's the first step of the training clef model. Uh, and in the second step, step we will use a pre-trained uh, audio encoder from the clef model uh, to do the self-supervised audio generation training. So the, bas the basic idea is shown in the upper graph. So as we can see, there is no text involved in this process. So we only need one audio data and pass through the audio encoders and get this blue vector, which is EX. So this EX is a low dimensional representation of the audio data. So for example, the L could be 512. So it's a very low dimensional representation. And the audio can also pass through the VE encoders to get a latent representation Z. So the Z here is a high dimensional features. Um, so after the training of the VAE, we assume that the representation Z here can be reconstructed to the mouse better one with, without too much loss. So here we have got a con condition signal, which is EX, and also a target audio, which is Z. So in this way, we can train our model in a self-supervised way. 
So that's the main idea of this model. So and the V encoder and the audio encoder are both phrased during the training. So is it, so the advantages of the self-supervised training is quite obvious. So the first one is the uh, self-supervised training can scale up the data data training data easily. Uh, also, we can perform the data augmentation easily. So for example, previous work you already do the augmentation using the mix up uh, or using the pseudo prompt enhancement introduced by the Mika audio. Uh, so for example, for the mix up, we generally will need two pairs of text and audios. And what we do is we mix the audio and then concatenate the text. But the problem here is that the concatenation of text is not necessary, not necessarily the optimal representations or optimal descriptions to the audios. So that, that will cause some problem on model trainings. And uh, uh, in the pseudo prompt enhancement, it's very clear that the, their pipeline is a bit complex. So it may take some time to do the designing. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit handcrafted. And yeah, but comparing with uh, our method, because our training do not involve the text. So we do not need to care about how do we handle the text. We just do whatever augmentation we want on audios, such as we do the low-pass filtering or do the mix-up. And then the audio will be automatically embedded into this latent space. So for example, this, this blue, blue dot could be a mix of the laughing sound and the guitar sound, as an example. And if the if a new audio data comes, uh, so this audio data do not have text text pair uh, text labeling, uh, the, it can also be embedded into this latent space for the model training. So that's the uh, advantages of the self-supervised model training. And the other advantages are also quite obvious. So um, because we work on a latent diffusion models are uh, similar to the stable diffusion. So our latent space is small, uh, is lower dimensional. So the computation is uh, pretty, uh, it's not very high. And the dependency is loosens on the audio text pairs. And uh, for the continuous latent space, we can do some cool stuff such as a zero shot audio store transfer and the zero shot super resolution and, and imprinting. And how do we do the, these three different tasks? So I will, briefly introducing that in this slide. So the audio still transfers, we can follow the laser pointers uh, in the uh, this path. So this this is uh, uh, this, uh, the input will be this XSRC. It's a cat meowling sound. And the cat meowling sound, if we want to con convert the cat meowling sound into a mosquito sound, uh, how do we do this? So the basic idea is to corrupt the cat meowling sound using the four diffusions, using the same noise schedules during the training. And uh, so here, uh, so after the corruption, the diffusion model will be confused about what's the content of the audios. And then in this case, we will fool the latent diffusions using the different text descriptions, like a flying insect or mosquitoes. And then the model can do the reverse diffusions using the gradient toward the mosquito sound. And then the output will be a mosquito sound. And as we can see, the, the time on, on, on the time dimensional, in which is a horizontal X, is quite aligned on the, on the time. But the frequency pattern is clearly different. And uh, how do we do the audio imprintings and audio surprise solutions? So for this, these two tasks are pretty similar. So it's basically the same as filling the missing part in the mail spectrogram or in the image. So I will take the imprinting as an example. So we can follow this, this path as uh, imprinting. So our input will be a, uh, an audio with some missing parts, like the rest part is missing. And this part will pass through a VAE encoder. And in every reverse step, uh, the model will replace the uh, the, 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 we will replace the latent diffusion output with our known context. And uh, the known context will be replaced and will be the information we can use for the later reverse step. And in this case, uh, and for, the, for each reverse step, the gradient is guided by the test prompt, which is mosquitoes. Uh, so in this way, we can generate the mosquito sound uh, in the missing part. So it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. So 
here, uh, here we have already introduced uh, uh, the model architecture and methodology. So uh, in the later part, I will introduce uh, the experiment. Uh, so for the for the training data, we have these four data sets. Uh, the first one is uh, audio set. Uh, audio set is a like two million data set, two million audio data set uh, with uh, with labels, with labels. And the audio caps is a small, uh, is a more smaller data set with around 50k data with text labeling. And uh, for free sound, it's a it's a community. But we can uh, crawl some modules from the website and do the model trainings. And the last one is about the UT Scientific Library. And eventually, we have 9,000 hours more audio samples. Uh, so that, that, that's the lar largest audio scale so far, uh, to, to our knowledge. And uh, uh, even if the last three data set do have the text labelings, but actually, we simply discard the text labelings and just simply use the audios for training. Yeah, but we do need the text for the clap training. So that's a, yeah, that was a reminder. Yeah, and, and how do we evaluate this, evaluate this method? Because the generative training, uh, because the sample we generate is pretty subjective. Um, people will have different opinions on different output. So we use two different um, methodologies. The first one is a subjective evaluation. Uh, it is about less the participant to reach the output using the overall qualities and the relevancy to text. So it's a subjective feeling to the synthesized output. And the second one is about the objective evaluation. So we, we use some uh, quite widely used metrics on image generation, uh, such as the furniture distance, uh, inception score, and the uh, KO divergence. And this, uh, this table shows an example for us to, uh, for the readers. So, we will present the file name for each audio file, and which is anonymized, and the corresponding test descriptions we use for the generative model. And the participants will need to read the audio using the overall impressions and the relations. So all in the scale of between one and 100. So 100 perfect, and one is nothing. And this, uh, this slide shows uh, uh, the main result. Uh, we can start with the second row. So the second row shows a subjective evaluation. So uh, this uh, here, I show four di five different graphs. So the rightmost graph shows the ground truth, the, the score of the ground truth. So this graph shows some interesting, uh, re re interesting results. Um, so generally speaking, the ground truth audio uh, is very close to the score 100. But actually, there are also some text labeling are not, not very perfect. That's around 50. So that means our, uh, even, if, even if we use a ground truth text and ground truth audios, it is not perfect for the human labelers. That's the first finding. And the second one is we compare the baseline deep sound models with our proposed audio LDM models. And uh, as we can see, the deep sound models have a average score around uh, 45. And our model have a score around 63. So it's a pretty large gap, pretty large improvement. And another thing worth notice is the deep sound and audio gene. The deep sound, uh, uh, no, 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 the third line in the, on the first line. So our model can achieve better performance than audio, audio gene with less, less parameters, without test supervisions, and using less data set, using only the audio captioning. So that's kind of, uh, yeah, that's actually a pretty exciting findings in this uh, in this experiment. Yeah, and uh, another thing might uh, uh, raise attention is we, we only use audio for trainings, but what if what if we do use the text for trainings? So we we did do that experiment, and we found that even if we use text as supervision, the model actually do not do as good as audios. Uh, that's a little bit contrary to intuitive, but that, that's uh, our experiment result. So I, I try to explain this. So for example, the reason could be the text labeling of the original data set is not perfect, as, as uh, this, par this paragraph show, uh, 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 as this graph shows. So it's not perfect. So model may be confused using the text as input, and uh, model will be confused on what kind of sound to generate, uh, may, may hinder the model performance. And this, this slide shows uh, 
uh, the simplified solution. But uh, uh, concerning the times, I will uh, I will quickly skim through these slides. So uh, we can do the uh, simplified solution on different kind of sound like violins or sneezing sound or baby crying. So it's different from previous studies that focusing on speech or focusing on music. So it's a general speech supervision models. And we can also do the in paintings, both in matched case and unmatched case. So in matched case, I refers to the context. The context is the same as the text input. In unmatched cases, that means the input text is not matched with the context. So for example, here is a, we started with a man speaking and uh, followed by some car honing sound, but we asked the model to fill in some sound in the middle of the ambient music. So that's a unmatched text, but still the, it can be smoothly transferred from one sound to another sound. So it's just pretty, pretty amazing. So, so there are a bunch of other experiments in the paper. So if you are interested, please check out our results um, in the experiment part. Uh, something worth notice is that uh, we found the commonly used, commonly used strategies such as the balance samplings and the mix-up do not have too much improvement on the um, on the object evaluation, but the mix-up do have uh, clearly uh, have a clear improvement on the subject evaluations. Yeah, and then we also find the cast fair free guidance is crucial for the model performance. Okay, so that's all for the main content of the. The, the mass experiment. So in the later few slides, I will show a few demos. So the first one is about audio cell transfer. Uh, the first graph shows how I do the drum, how I, trans, how I transfer the drum beat into the ambient music. So the so this is the first chunk, and I gradually transfer it to the ambient music. Uh, and the second one is to gradually transfer the sheep vocalizations uh, into a narration sound or the monologue sound. And if we make the step small, small enough, we can, we can get the following result. So yeah, so it's a, we gradually change one sound to another sound. And the, the number shows on the top left corner shows the levels or the strings we use to do the audio store transfer. So the larger of these numbers, the closer to our target sound. And yeah, uh, so for example, if this number is 100, so it's a mediocre, a mediocre number, not, not high, not, not low. So that will be half trumpets or half ambient music, or this one will be half trumpet or half children singing. So uh, it is quite interesting. But also this, this demo shows that uh, in cell transfer, we do need uh, careful tuning or on the transferring screens. And if you are interested on the more examples, uh, they are listed in a project page. So in the project page, I also, uh, uh, also sh show some examples on controlling the acoustic environment or controlling the audio pitch and controlling the temporal orders. Yeah, but I have to admit that the temporal orders is not 100% guaranteed uh, in current models because we use the uh, global conditions for the for the audio so it's a uh, uh, it's not perfect and that will be our future works yeah and, and this slide shows a few more examples uh, made by the communities on uh, hugging face uh, people are pretty, pretty genius uh, the first one is uh, the stone is hitting a metal plate so we can check it out Yeah, pretty realistic. And the second one is a uh, dance music with drum beats played by multiple instruments. Yeah, this sounds pretty nice, but yeah, actually the uh, current model is not 100% a very good at generate music. So it do need some fine tuning on the speed or the test prompt. And uh, uh, the third, third one is a uh, healthy, deep gurgling 10 second burp. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's too long, so we're gonna stop here. And the fourth one is a uh, very windy conditions, uh, trying to fly against the wind in a parachute. Yeah, 
you know, something I've used, the ambience of someone flying in the sky with a parachute. And the fifth one is a small water stream in the forest with some bird vocalizations. So it's um, some ambient noise. Okay. On the last one is uh, someone slurping noodles, long slurp. Yeah, really enjoy this noodle, right? And uh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, in, in this slide, I, sh I will show some weird examples. I will call this as uh, auto distribution samples because uh, this kind of text are no way existed in our training examples, uh, to my knowledge. Yeah, and uh, the first one is the where it is sound in existence. So, yeah, maybe because it's auto, auto distribution, so it uh, sounds a bit weird and unpleasant. And the second one is the uh, cry of um, this one, the terrifying ancestral deity. Uh, Yeah, our last demo is a man speaking backward, creepily and exhaustively. So it doesn't make sense of this word, but it do have some results. Yeah, yeah, there's something, somebody's speaking nonsense. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and this one is a demo of image audio generation. So the image is, uh, is maybe a cell uh, floating uh, in some in some liquid yeah we can hear some liquid and, and bubbling sound uh, yeah so also that is an um, image audio we just mentioned uh, also there is one AI album generated by our model so I think the cover maybe it, it, it is generated by stable diffusion, but I, I'm also uh, the text may be generated by, by ChatGPT. I'm not sure, uh, but the music is generated by our model, so it's pretty cool. Uh, if you're interested, please check it out. And our model will be soon uh, integrated with the diffuser, uh, so with a with a support team from the diffuser uh, with the with the hanging face, um, the audio audio can be easily used in the futures with a few lines of code. Yeah, and uh, also there are some um, great YouTubers uh, covering our work. So such as this one, it's um, 90 minutes work. Uh, it's pretty nice. And I'm glad a lot of people are enjoying our, our models. And our, our paper are public available. So if you're interested, please check it out. And uh, our pre models and evaluation tools are both available. And uh, yeah, they're, they're, and, and if you are interested in uh, other work of of my research, uh, please check out, check check out my website here, hoholiu.github.io. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. uh, and there I have to admit there are some limit, limitations of these models, and we are trying to improve the overall sound qualities and the text relevancies in the next futures, and we will try to make sure the model is as as open as possible in the futures. So yes, thanks for listening. Uh, that's uh, most of the content and uh, welcome to for any questions.